Hello, I'm a tuba judge and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, 2020 will be over this week. Praise God. What a year. Praise God. Now, listen, listen. I don't know how 2020 was for you. Now, but we know this is a year that affected everyone. Now, when I say affected, I didn't hear me. I didn't say negatively. Praise God. I said everyone was affected somehow this year. Either you were you were locked down, or um, there are people who who got sick. There are people who had to deal with people who got sick. Now, listen. Whatever the year has been for you, and there are people who prospered. Oh yes, they say who's pro oh sure <laughs> there are people who prospered. But whatever the year has been for you, listen, you are going to make up your mind right now that the experience of 2020 is not going to be directly affecting what your experience of 2021 will be. You've got to make up your mind for that. Say, so how do I make up my mind for that? Yes. As 2020 is shutting down, you are shutting it down. Whether you have been victorious, whether you have been, um, been a failure, or whether it has been a sorrowful year for you, you are shutting it down. You know why? Because God is saying to you, forget the former things. So let it go. Why? Because he's doing a new thing. If you let it blind your eyes, if you let the experience, you know, you say, man, I don't want to even plan. That's how I planned the end of 2019 and told myself 2020 will be my year. But man, we stepped into 2020. Everybody was locked down. You can't travel anywhere. You know, you keep thinking all those thoughts. Yes, it happened. But let me tell you this. Don't let it affect your focus. And that's which God is command. You know, listen. It's so easy to enjoy life. I'm telling you, so I'm, I'm sharing with you on how to end the year. So it's so, so easy to enjoy life. Now, when I mean enjoy life, I'm talking about living a life of victory in every situation. Whatever happens, whatever comes. I, I may not be able to, um, um, I may not be able to influence everything that happens to me. But there is one thing I know. My response to every situation is under my control. Oh, yes. Listen. You may not be able to affect or influence the things that happen around you, the things that happen to you. But hear me. Your response is completely under your control. So, you say... I, why did he do this? Eh, he's the one that did this to me. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. You are guilty. Eh, but, but, but because he did this, what should I have done? You're guilty. You know why you're guilty? You were fully responsible for your response to that situation. You could have done it some other way that is better and more edifying. And you don't blame your response on what someone had done. It only shows that you have not grown yet. So when, when you always blame others for your actions, and I was angry, that's why. What made you angry? And he did, or she did this thing. You don't, you don't blame people for your response. You don't, you don't blame your wife for, for responding the way you, 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 you responded. You don't blame your wife for... You know, oh, because my wife did this, that's why I, I cheated on her. Oh, because my husband did this, that's why I acted this way. Ah, uh ah, -uh. <laughs> no, sir. You are telling a lie. You are saying you are a child, you are a baby. So you've, you know, Jesus said something. I, I, I want you to understand that. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? Now, we know the scripture. 
We know it. But many times we quote it during when we're preaching the gospel. I want people to repent and turn to the Lord. But that statement is broad. And it's, it's deeper. And it's, it's, the meaning of that statement has... You know, look, it's sometimes good, it's good to look at the story and look at exactly what Jesus was saying. What does it mean to lose your soul? He's not talk, he wasn't talking about going to hell. That's the funny thing. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. You see, it's only the Holy Spirit that will bring you, under, bring you to the place of understanding. You know, I told you last week, understanding matters. I've been talking about that. So what does it mean for a man to lose his soul? Simple. It means for you to lose control of your soul. What does it mean to lose control of your soul? To lose control of your emotions, to lose control of your, of, or you, know, you know what the soul is, your, your, your mind, your responsibility. When you lose control of it, you are losing your soul. To lose your soul doesn't mean to go to hell. And, and, and take, it, take it from me. Why would Jesus say lose? Lose. It means to lose means to, to, for, to, for something to leave you, for something to be taken from you. So now that means for that thing, for you to lose something, that thing must have been yours. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when he used the term lose your soul, it means your soul was yours. What does that mean? Your soul was under your control. So when you lose control of it, and you see your soul behaving anyhow. <laughs> you just see your soul behaving anyhow. And I said, wow. I, 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 didn't know, I didn't know I was going to respond that way. So he did this. And then before I knew what was happening, I had done this. No control. You are already losing your soul. And now the question is, what were you doing that you didn't strengthen your mind? Sometimes it's important you do this. Just sit down and try to do a simulation of, of your response to certain things. That's part of your meditation process. That's part of your thinking process. You just run a, a, a simulation of, okay, if, if, if something happens like this, what, what will be my response? And then when you do that, you begin to you look at yourself. Now, there are times you must have moments with yourself. You must learn to have moments with yourself. You just sit down there and you're thinking, who am I? You look at things that have happened. Sometimes at the close of the day, look at events that have happened that day, how you responded. Now, begin to work on yourself to respond better. You know, someone did this to you. I shouted today. Why did I shout? Can I, can I, can I pass my information or can I... Can I express myself better without shouting? And then I will be understood. So I say, no, no, no. If you don't shout at these people, they will not understand what you're saying. Not really. Not necessarily. Sometimes you shout and shout and nothing still is done. Because you're shouting, but they are not hearing you. So you better think of what better way to communicate. Now that will only happen. You see, what, what, when you spend this time with yourself, what are you doing? See, you're, you're, you're looking at the areas where you need strength. What did the Bible say? If you fail in the day of adversity, your strength was small. So what, what do you do? Strengthen yourself. Increase your strength. So when adversity comes, you will be able to stand it. Now that's what it means to have gain, to have control over your soul. So you don't say, I'm, I'm going to fast today. And before 9 a.m., you started eating everything. I said, I thought you were fasting today. Man. I try, try, leave that in. No control. See, the same thing God will give. You see, why am I sharing this with you? Listen, 2021 is going to be a year of instructions. Year of instructions. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. <laughs> I have a lot to say to you. I have a lot to say to you. Because, you see, we, we are entering into a new phase with God. I, I began to tell you that last week. We're, we're, we're entering a new phase with God. And, and from 2021, 10 years, from 2021, 10 years from then, it's the most important of, permit me to say without 
thinking I'm exaggerating of human existence. Next 10 years, the next 10 years, I'm going to be focusing more on what your own role is and let's leave the events of the world you know because when we're here we just oh hey and then we don't we don't know the responsibility we are supposed to take in these things so so my focus is dealing with you dealing with your own response what's your responsibility see what's the strength of your soul or what's the strength of your hold on your soul I don't have money because I don't have money. That's why I did this thing that I did. Uh -huh. Was that the only response you could have given? Uh, it's because I, I did this. That's why I... Was that the best you could have given? Remember what uh, Second Peter says? It says, add to your faith virtue and excellence. In other words, get a better way of doing things you know sometimes don't just be selfish to think hey but but i i had to no think about every other person's good if i respond this way it will please me yes but will it please every other person you remember jesus said and said to jesus in that mount of temptation if you are the son of god command these stones to be made bread question was jesus the son of god yes he was was he hungry? Yes, he was. Did he have the power to change, command stones to be made bread? Yes, he had. So why didn't he do it? See, doing it would have been responding to the devil. In other words, obeying Satan. And then the Bible says you are a servant of the, to the one whom you yield yourself to obey. So the moment he says, oh, that's true, let me respond. I tell people this. When you see things like false prophecy or false prophets or false, you know, people who are false. And, you know, they do a lot of drama to get your attention. Now, the attention getting is not the problem. See, the things they tell, they may tell you things that are true. However, they got it whether by investigation, physical investigation or demonic force or demonic spirit, however they got it, it's not the problem. They may be accurate somehow. You see, how they get you, and listen to me, how they get you is the instructions they begin to give you. Yeah. So someone can tell you everything, tell you your phone number, tell you whatever it is. It's not a problem because those things exist already. See? But you see, where they get a hold of you is when they so, so what do I do? That's where you always end up. So what do I do? Okay, this is what you should do. Now, the moment you begin to obey those instructions, if they are false, you have become their slave. You have become their servant. So if that instruction is not from the Lord, you see, you, you have enslaved yourself to the devil. That's why the Bible says, test every spirit. Prophecies are beautiful. But the thing that causes prophecy to come to pass are the detailed instructions that are given. Now, it is in the obeying, obeying of those details in, instructions, it shows who your Lord is. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's why you have to be careful with all these things. But you see, listen, take this time to develop the strength you have over your soul. That's, that's the job you must begin to do from now. Today, do a personal assessment of your actions. Look at your family. You don't have to look too far. Look at your family. Look at your colleagues. How do you respond in the office? How do you respond at home? When your wife suddenly tells you, we need this thing and you don't have money in your pocket, how do you respond to it? Eh, must we, must we, must we buy it? Must we do this? Listen. I said, okay, so um, what do we have to do today? And this is the one we have to do today. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Even if the money is not there, you see, the way you want, eh, this house, we eat too much. Eh, how many, how many? You're responding. 
I know why you're responding like that. Because there is no money with you. You don't have money to respond to that situation. So it is now affecting your soul. You are not in charge. So what do you okay have heard? You, you step out and say, Lord, we need some more supplies in this house. <laughs> That's how God's children behave. I know where to channel the situation. To. That's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 22, it says in 21 or 22, it says, in your patience, possess your soul. In your patience. Now that is how you strengthen the resolve of your soul. Patiently. You observe. You learn. You strengthen. You observe. You learn. You strengthen. Praise God. Yeah. Possess. Have control of your soul. And what does that mean? Have control of your response to situation. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.